of a real change for several years. Not helped by the fact that rail track collapsed early on, um, which nearly bankrupted our business. Uh, the new trains um, were going to take several years to come through. Um, so the brand, the brand ratings fell, customer satisfaction fell. And I think, to be fair, it's fair to say, in the media, Virgin Trains became a bit of a joke. Um, that was a hard lesson to learn. There are three key words which capture the screw it, just do it motto. Courage, intuition and fun. Courage can take many forms. I guess I was fairly courageous back in my belief in how people are, are best led. As I've said a number of times now, for me people are good business. So put the time and effort into them. It was a leap of faith to embark on the vision work and I had to defend my belief from the challenge from shareholders, more so my minor minority shareholder than my majority shareholder, um, not to spend the money on all the vision work and all the development work, just drop it to the bottom line as profit. Um, I couldn't produce a business case, a traditional business case with a spreadsheet, um, but I knew and I felt it was the right thing to do. Another example of courage is, I was at a, a party conference in Manchester a few years ago. Somebody has to go. I received a call from one of our onboard managers who looks after the teams that work on board and she was concerned we were heading for a strike over some new rosters, staff rosters. And it was, a, it was born out of the attitude of one of my team who transpires was quite, um, has been quite command and control-ish with the union reps, had been quite rude and aggressive with them and basically said, take it or leave it in terms of the new rosters. I have to say, I was, I was a bit surprised and quite resistant to that onboard manager's viewpoint. But she persisted. She challenged me to listen and kept challenging me until she believed I was listening. And over that conversation, my intuition kicked in and said, actually, she's right. We are on the verge of a strike because of the attitude of the director in, in question. So I left the conference, I met the union officials, and I apologised. And the remarkable thing is, not only did we avoid the damaging strike, the suggestions they made to improve the roster saved us money as well. Um, her courage to persist in challenging the CEO was tremendous. And that really gave me a lot of satisfaction because all the work we'd done on the vision work had really meant they were, a lot of people in that business were capable of challenging upwards in that organisation. Courage can also be having an idea and the determination to pursue it, despite the pressure from colleagues to conform with the crowd. We all, we all know of peer pressure, or the pressure from the management to stay in line. As part of the vision workshops, we spent a lot of time working with people to get them into a position where they felt it was okay to challenge to give feedback, to have ideas, and to express their views. Remember the non-negotiable of openness and honesty? Uh, we continue to this day to support people in developing and using these skills. Intuition, I've mentioned that word a couple of times. What is it? What is intuition? One definition is the ability to acquire knowledge without interference or the use of reason. So that's definitely not the bureaucratic leader. Carl Jung, I think, called call it perception via the unconscious. And believe me, I've worked with quite a few unconscious leaders in the meantime. <laughs> the virgin parties are legend. It's often called, certainly around by me, gut feel. Or it feels the right thing to do. How many of us make probably the single biggest financial decision of our life on what our heart tells us, the house purchase? and not on the facts or the pros and cons. Um, I guess in the room, how many of you have had ideas but found the focus on the process and the analysis or the reluctance of your leader to engage has stopped it dead? Or meant you didn't, you didn't even suggest it in the first place? I have a few sayings which describe that type of circumstances. One is paralysis through analysis. 
Or one I really like is, it's like circumcising the mosquito. <laughs> or the not invented here syndrome. I'm sure all of us in the room at times in our careers have come up against those type of problems. And this is where the courage comes in. Courage to drive towards your vision for the business because you have the passion to do so. And it's, a, and it's the courage of leaders to accept people may have better ideas than you. And it's okay as a leader to say, actually, I don't know. Or I was wrong. And again, one of the features of working for Virgin is that people like Sir Richard and his team often say, I was wrong. I don't know. I believe a person's intuition improves with the experience he or she gains over time, whether this is about people or products. Experiences, well, can be good and bad, but they both improve intuition. Within Virgin Trains, we have hundreds of very experienced people whose intuition on what works and doesn't is second to none. And most of those people, the vast majority of those people, are at the front lines of our business. So we try to encourage them to share their ideas, to challenge their colleagues and try out those ideas. We describe this as test and learn. If it works, fantastic. If not, we can do something else. The only non-negotiable, it has to be safe. It has to make money. So remember tip two, a vision. The ideas are filtered through the non-negotiables within the vision. As I said, in our case, safety and profit. And the, the success is measured by the same non-negotiables. But finally, whatever you do in terms of leadership and in terms of vision, have some fun doing it. It's, it's not a surprise when I say people flourish if they are praised. Usually they don't need to be told when they've done something wrong because most of the time they know it. And, and I know Sir Richard believes this absolutely uh, passionately, it's important to always look for the best in people, which at times can be really difficult. And trust me, over the last two or three weeks, I've come to know that really well. <laughs> it's a real challenge for me when it comes to finding something good in the DFT at the moment, rather than focus on the mistakes. So trying to catch people doing something good every day is a tremendous way of motivating that individual. So find the fun in your business. It's so, it, I believe it's so important. Try and ensure that both the staff and the customers really feel that sense of warmth and affection. And some of these stories I could tell you about our frontline teams, what they do to engage with the, the staff. If I can say, there's some regular travellers with us who will wait for a particular crew to travel home with because they've created that relationship and trust access with that passenger, which means the passenger sees that as value. Um, and and the, the, the area of our business, where, which that tends to happen an awful lot, is with our Liverpool crews. So that scouse humour really resonates with a lot of our passengers. So if we want our staff to treat customers with heartfelt, uh, in a heartfelt and attentive way, they need to love their work and be proud of the company. And that's the power of a brand. Is, as I said earlier, British Rail, when they were British Rail, there was a lot of passionate people. What we did was put a flag in the ground which said Virgin and they had something to rally to. And then we spent the time and the effort listening to what they wanted to deliver great service. One of the mottos which we use a lot in our business is we all take our jobs very, very seriously, but we don't take ourselves seriously at all. And that's back to the point about egos. Put the ego in the drawer and treat people as equals. So, good news is not much more to go now. In summary, what I've tried to define is leadership, the various styles of leadership, and shared with you, free of charge, four tips to effective leadership. And my personal view, and I know the view of, of Virgin, is leadership is not, is not a complex subject. But there is more than one way to lead, and it involves human beings and organisations both of which change constantly. So there you go, there's the tips. I guess leadership would be a lot simpler if we could com computer chip our people. Um, I guess for those